Hi and welcome to the 11th webinar in 12D's training webinar series. My name is Lisa Stewart and I'm the Marketing and Communications Coordinator at 12D Solutions. Our 12D training webinars showcase common industry challenges, taking a close look at industry best practices and how these can be implemented using 12D model software. The aim of these webinars is to upskill 12D model users and broaden their understanding of the capabilities of 12D model. We'll keep running these webinars regularly and recording them for posting through our website and our YouTube channel. The first 10 webinars from this training series, as well as the first 16 webinars from our industry solutions series, are available online if you missed those. During this live presentation, you'll be able to type your questions along the way, and we'll answer as many as possible throughout the webinar. I'll also read out some of your questions to the presenter for his insights if there's time. Today's webinar on chains will be presented by Matt Stevens, who heads up 12D Victoria, taking care of 12D sales, support and training throughout Victoria and Tasmania. This webinar aims to show a user who may or may not have used chains before how to build up a generic chain in 12D model. Over to you, Matt. Thanks a lot. This webinar is on chains. Chains are one of the best and easiest tools in 12D model to lift productivity. They can be used to run specifically or made more generic so they can run over more situations. This webinar aims to show the user who may or may not have used chains before how to build up a chain that is generic. In my client visits, I see a lot of wonderful chains users have written, and with a bit of knowledge, those chains could be made even more powerful. The two main tools of customization are the macro language and chains. The 4D macro language, whilst powerful, is not for the faint-hearted. It requires a knowledge of basic programming. Chains, however, are a great visual way of running multiple commands in 12D with the click of one button. In my experience, before I write macro code, I always have a good think about whether what I was trying to achieve could be done as part of a chain, mainly because they are easier for the user to create, but also easier for the user to maintain in the future. Building a simple chain to create a view. I'm going to walk you through creating a chain from beginning to end. It will be a simple chain that just creates a view. I will demonstrate the use of parameters to name the view and to apply settings to that particular view. We will also add conditional statements to control flow through our chain. So to run a chain, we're just going to go up to Utilities, or to create a chain, utilities create. We're going to give it a chain file. So we give it a new name, so I'll just call this new, uh, new view. Just hit right. And this is the chain editor panel we're looking at at the moment. If I want to add an extra command to a chain, I click this insert button here, and you see that it inserts a new command. By default, it comes up as a type function. What I want to do is click on this filter icon at the side, go down to the Views option, and select the Create View option that's down there. Now, you can see all the parameters that are available with um, the create, create View option, or all the things we need to set. So I'm going to just create a view, view called New. So we know it's a new view. The view type is going to be a plan view. If I wanted to create other views, I have a drop-down box. And I have top, left, bottom, and right. If non-blank, these are values in pixels of the top left and bottom right corners of the created view. So we'll start one at 0, 0, which is this top corner here. And we'll give it a bottom right, so we'll give it uh, 900 on the right, uh, bottom 900 and the right 940. Then we'll click this button beside the command name so we know what this command is called and hit right. Okay, 
and then we can give this uh, a little. Uh, we can give this uh, chain a run. If I hit run, you can see there that the plan year has come up. So nothing groundbreaking about that. But what about if I want particular settings to be applied to the view? For example, how about adding a grid to this view automatically? So if we were to add, if we do it manually, we click on our view settings button, go across down to grid, get this option here, and we'd select draw grids as an option. Okay, so what we're going to do to apply that is we're going to use what's called an option manual command. This is a useful command as it allows the panel to be captured without first running the panel. The option manual command records the option with additional information that is used when the command is run in the chain. For example, recording that certain buttons are pressed in a certain order. This is very useful for more complex panels or panels that require multiple button presses. It also is useful for recording macro panels. Unlike the option command, the panel must be already on the screen with the appropriate fields filled in before it can be recorded. So we've got it up there. We give ourselves another line here. And we go to the execution area and we click option manual here. So the option manual command records an option in two parts. The panel to use, so the data on this particular panel, and also the buttons that we need to press and in what order those buttons need to be pressed in. So if we go to the bottom and capture the data in the panel, it tells me the panel data has been captured and then I click on the bottom capture buttons to capture which button I need to select to run the option, which is set in this case. I then hit uh, right and then that's been saved away now. So if I did shut that view down now and then gave this a bit of a run, you would see now I've got a plan new view up and the grids come on for me automatically. So this is all well and good if you wanted the new view to be called new all the time. But what about if you wanted to change its name? This is where parameters come in. Chain parameters can be used in the place of actual values in the panel and the parameters can be given different values each time the chain is run. Chain parameters are used to get, give the chain this added flexibility. For example, in our chain we can use the parameter, use a parameter to set the value of our view with the intention of being able to modify this parameter later on to a view name of our choice. So the one chain can be used multiple times to create many different views with many different names. So the way we do this is to go to the create new view and tick the parameters box. So if we go back into here and we've got an option there called use parameters. So we lose the information out of there so we just, we, we need to type in a parameter. So this is a parameter that we're going to use for the view name. So Hence, we'll just type in the word uh, new name. That's the name of the parameter we're going to use. And we'll give it the same areas, 900 and 940. And if I hit right, okay. Now I need to create a, or, or I need to create a parameter value file for myself that runs with this particular chain. So that parameter view name needs to be stored in another file. So the parameter value file up here, I'll call it the same name as my chain. I hit enter, it tells me it doesn't exist. I'll just go down to open. Bring this across and I'll insert a new parameter into this file by clicking the insert button. And the type I'm going to use in this case is text, but we have got various other options where we can pick real, text, string, tin, model, function, true or false, color or grid. 
So in this case, I'll just use text. And again, I'll use view name. So make it identical to what I had it in here. And the value, uh, that could be a default value, which I might type in as new and hit write. So it writes away that particular file. Okay, so now it's going to look in that file when we run this. We will run it with this parameter file and it's going to grab the new name from the parameter that's in this file. Use that as the new name. So if I then go and click on shut that. Now the option grid on view, if I want to apply that particular parameter to this option, so this is this will work now, okay? If I if I did run it, it will work because the parameter is already stored as as new, the plan new, so it will work. But we've got to change this section op the second option here, so that makes use of that parameter file. So we, the way we do that is we click on the parameters underneath, and then at the moment that panel is using no parameters at all. If we click the prick, pick parameters button here, it then generates a record option parameters file or panel. If you hit pick, we can then go and pick on this parameter up here called new and then use inside that uh, new field there, use the parameter that's saved in this um, saved in the PDF file, and if I right click, I get a list of them. So because it's reading from this particular parameter parameter value file. So if I click new name and unclick saving PDF because I've already got it set up in the PDF already. If I didn't have one, I could um, leave that ticked and it would automatically add it to that particular file. So what I'm going to do now is just hit set and finish. And now, I'll shut that again, run this, it all works as it did before, but it's using the parameter rather than the name of the view. The simplest way of making this flexible now, we have to set up the chain with parameters, is to tick the option to prompt for parameters. This allows us to change the parameter each time the chain is run by popping up the parameter value file editor panel. To see this, you need to run through the chain through the recap panel. So as I run it now, I can then see I've got a view name there, and I could type in a new value here called align, and to create a view called align. I write and finish. And then presto, I've now got a new view called Plan Align. And the view's got the grid on it as well, so it's passed through those two two lines in the chain. So there is a reasonable way, that's a reasonable way of running the chain, but we can take it a little further by providing some GUI or panel for the user. So we can make use of a special type of chain command called a prompt command. Let's go up to the commands, and we're going to put this first now. Use under here. Um, we're going to use other. We're going to create what's called a prompt command. The prompt command essentially creates a panel for you. If anyone has ever created a manual, uh, created a, pen, uh, a panel manually. Uh, through the macro language, they can sometimes be quite time consuming. This is all, this method is very simple and very fast. The prompt title is the title that the panel gets. So we might make this create new plan view. The prompt message is written on the planet written on the panel itself, so I might just put plan view, so we know it, it reinforced the views for a plan view. And the parameter for the result is the parameter to store 
the result of this prompt. So the return value basically, it lets us know what button a user has pressed in this case. So I'll call this U plan U. The next step is to define widgets or fields in our panel. You might put one here called new plan view name and then we give it a parameter. Okay, so we can save this as a parameter if we if we wish. So we'll call this parameter view name. So as as we had before. And we'll make this optional, no. So we've got the option of, of making that field optional in our panel. And we'll give it two buttons on the bottom, okay? So the buttons are displayed, yeah, at the bottom of the panel. So we'll use one called create, or the button called create, and the return value we'll give it is create as well. Generally, I find it's easier to give, you have your buttons, you have the finish button as well, because you you might need a finish button if someone brings up the panel and then decides they don't want to, they no longer want to create their view. Okay, so we'll now hit right on that, and then the command name actually, we'll click on that from plan, plan view there. So, okay, so let's test to see what that particular panel looks like. So if I execute that, so that executes just that one command. So you can see up there, we have create new plan as the, as the title, the prompt title. Then plan view is the prompt message. And then we have new plan view name as the, the name of the plan view. And it's grabbing that, you can see it's grabbing that from the PDF file. Um, so it's automatically set that as a line. We've got two buttons on the bottom, one called create and one called finish. Now comes the time to add some conditional statements to our chain. Because if we just ran that at the moment, if I made that a line two, it would just, oh, it should just flow through and um, create, and create the, uh, if I didn't do a run, I'll give this a number, a line two, create. It'll flow through the chain and create the plan view alignment too. So we need to give it uh, some type of uh, conditional statements to control the flow through our chain. Because what about if someone selects finish? Okay, we want to halt or we want to uh, get the user out of this loop before it goes down and creates the new loop. So on the prompt plan view page, I'm going to remember the parameter for the result. I'll just do a copy of that. Then I will uh, insert a prompt command. So I'll insert, or sorry, ins insert a new conditional statement under here, conditionals, and I'll say if parameter equals, and I'll use the parameter name that I just created, new plan view. And I'll say if perimeter value equals uh, finish, okay, and write that away, we have two options here, two flags appear under here, on pass and on fail. Therefore, if the user hits finish, the button will be deemed to have passed. If the user hits the create button, it will have failed the test and be able to continue through the chain to the next line. So on pass, we want to go down to drop, drop down and halt. So we've got a couple of different options here. We'll drop down and to halt. So like that. And on fail, we'll leave it to continue so I can do the rest of the, of the chain. So let's, let's now uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that. So if I just run this again. So we'll make this a line maybe three. 
it goes, creates it. What about if we click the finish button now? Click the finish button, it passes and then it just halts and gets out of the, the chain. So the next item we need to address in, 12, in the 12D project is that we can't have two views of the same name. So we do have to put another conditional statement to test to see whether a view of that name does not exist before attempting to create one. Throughout this webinar I've been quite careful not to select a view name that already exists in the project. So we'll insert a new command underneath the uh, new plan view equals, so under this one, we'll insert, we'll insert another conditional statement and there's one down here called if view exists. So if we click on if view exists, okay, and we'll use parameters, okay, either we could hard code this in or we could use parameters, we use parameters. And the parameter we're going to use, of course, is view name. And so what it's going to do is check to see if that view name exists. If it does exist, it passes. If it doesn't, it fails. So I'll just hit right on that. So what do we want to do if it, if it passes, if the view name exists? We probably want to send it to the top of our chain again so that the user has the option of, of writing in a new view or a view name that doesn't exist. So to do that, we need to actually create what's called a label to send it. We've got a, we've got a, it's basically a go-to statement in this area here. If we go up to commands, click on insert and give it a label, we can actually tell it to go to a particular label. So under conditionals, we'll make the label and we'll give the command name as maybe start. We we'll hit uh, right on there. So now I've got a little flag in there that says start. We can send this option here on pass. So if the view name does exist, we can go to mode, go to label this time, and the label we can um, select is um, the start label. If we hit right. On pass, it's going to go to the start label, and on fail, of course, it's going to fall through here and continue and go and create the view for us. So let's take take that, uh, let's run it again. So if we click run, and I know I've got it on a line three, so if I make this a line three and now hit create, it won't create it for me. It defaults back to the top of our, our um, back to the top of our chain. What about if I make it a line four? Create, and it creates a new plan view called a line four and finishes off the panel. What about again, if I hit run, if I hit a line five and then decide I don't want to continue on with my creating with my new view, if I hit finish, we bail out of the chain. There's one more thing I'd like to add to it, um, to this chain. It's probably a little uh, flag to yourself that the view's been created successfully. So you can write to the output window if you like. So if we, it'll be the last thing we do. So we'll go insert, type, and we'll go under other. And there's an option here called the write to output window. And I just want to say that the command we run has been successful. So we'll put the new view as been created. And hit right. Oh, maybe put there for the new command name so you know what it is. So if I was then to run it and then go align five this time, hit create then check my output window, it says there that the new view has been created and the change has been completed. Of course, if I went and ran this and I did um, a line 5 again and hit create and then finish, I'll get no such message in there. 
So that basically ends the webinar on chains and parameters. Are there any questions? Hopefully from this webinar you can see that chains are one of the best and easiest tools in 12D model to list, lift productivity. We work through a very simple example to demonstrate that they can be used to run specifically or made more generic so they can be run over more situations. The webinar showed the user who may or may not have used chains before how to build up a chain that was generic. Are there any questions? Thanks, Matt. Uh, yes, I believe we have time for maybe just one question. Um, we've got Peter from Brisbane, and no, it's not Peter Tainton trying to stump you. Um, what are the new features in version 12 to do with chains? Uh, good question, Peter. <laughs> um, now, I'll just see. Uh, I might have a PowerPoint. I gave a talk at the conference in Brisbane on this. Now, just to see if I can dig up a PowerPoint on that. Chains are the quickest and easiest way to increase productivity for a user in 12D model. Some of the new chain commands that are available to us in version 12 under the view area is we can redraw a view. Once upon a time we could redraw all views, but now we can pick one single view to redraw. We can calculate the extent of a view. We can minimise a view for all views. We can maximise a view for all views. We can restore a view or all views. We can regen a section view or we can resize a particular view. In this example, I've just created a little chain here, and I'll just give you an example of minimising all views, so they're all minimised now. I can restore all views, they're all back, maximise them all, so they're all now maximised on these tables. I can um, tile all views in the horizontal, tile all views in the vertical. I can also tile views as a cascaded type. I've got a little chain here that just puts my view back the way they previously were. Let's run that now. What we have now is we have new chain commands in the conditional area. So conditionals is a model shared in, does a super alignment solve. If an apply MTF is valid, if a module exists, if a file contains text, or if a file contains an XML element. So if we just take a look at this uh, little one here. If you take a look here, we're just testing to see whether the proposed cadastral exists or whether the proposed cadastral is shared in or whether it's not shared in. So we'll give that one a run. You'll see down the output window, the model proposed cadastral is shared in. I don't we just go to the share manager now. I'll just switch that proposed cadastral off. Got a bit of a regen. Run. Now you'll see the proposed cadastral is not shared in. And it also plays a little wave there as well. Put another one here. Um, does the super alignment solve? I'll just run that. It tells me it resolves and it jumps to the end. That's good. If I edit the super alignment script and break it, something like that, and then try and run this, it will tell me that it resolves, if the resolve failed, and it jumps to the label at the end. So it's actually doing the validation of that solving. The next one, I'll just switch that off. The next one here is does the apply many or the apply MTF, but is that valid? Let me just try now and make it not valid. I'll give it a WMTF file. I'll apply that. You'll see that I can't, can't read the templates file. So I'll finish that off. Now let's run this. And you'll see now when it tries to run it, it tells me it's it, its, it's validation has failed and it jumps to the end. So it tests to see whether it's, it's valid or not. Um, the last one here 
is if um, I'm testing to see whether the dynamic water supply module exists. And if, it, if that exists, uh, and write something to the output window. And in this case, you can see that the dynamic water supply exists failed, so it's jumping to the end. Okay, some other new chain commands we have are elements where we can actually calculate the extent of the model. We can profile a string now on a section view. So we can automatically set that up. Uh, we can play a WAV file as well. So for instance, if you get an error, you may want to play a WAV file. You can go to you can, you can go to label pop-ups for a list in the list of conditionals. So on pass or on select on on pass or on fail, the sections, it will now pop up a list of the, the labels. Rather than you having to type them in by hand, if you click on the button beside, it will read those labels directly from your chain and you'll be able to select them from the list. Hence that you shouldn't make any uh, typographical errors on them. New chain commands under execution. We have a plot plot sheet, and we can do a plot multi-page plot sheet. So these are all able to be run by chains. You probably won't know a lot about them at the moment, but they're new features, um, plotting a plot sheet and plotting a multi-page plot sheet in version 12. So you can execute a multi-page plot sheet. This option plots a single name page, a range of pages, or all sheets in the multi-page plot set. Additions to the existing chain commands are views, create, under views, create. View now takes a view favorites file. So again, if you've seen version 12, we have something called a view favorite. And you can create a file out of that. You can actually load that into your um, chain now when you create a view. Um, backup of chains is quite important. Whenever a chain is modified, a backup copy of the original chain is added to backups for the folder. So you get those .1.2.3 files after a chain's been created, so it means you don't really have to create your own backups. 12D will create them for you, which is really, really good. Compiling change. Um, it's a lot of people spend a lot of time on these chains and. You know, chains can be 300, 400 lines long, or you could have chains calling other chains, etc. What we can do now is we can compile up those chains. So we get a file that is chain C, and it is the compiled chain. And compiled chains can be run as a normal chain, but you can't see the contents of the compiled chain. So obviously they can't be viewed or edited. So you write a chain, you compile it, and no one can muck around with your chain. So there's an example there of how you can compile chains. Standard chains compile. And basically that, that's it. That's the new features in the chains of version 12. Thanks very much for your attention today. Thanks, Matt, and thanks to the audience for your questions. Um, sorry to those we can't get to live today, but we'll um, answer you by email later. The recording of this webinar will be available in coming days through our website and our YouTube channel. Our next two training webinars are Travis Adjustments and Least Squares on the 2nd of November and Drainage Creation Updating and Custom Reporting from Spreadsheet on the 10th of November. We've also got another industry solutions webinar in between about 12D ePlan, so do see our website for details of all of those. We'll keep updating it with many more topics in coming weeks and also continue to keep you posted through email and social media. That concludes our presentation for today. Thank you for attending and we hope to see you at future webinars.